Today, I am joined by myself. <laughs> I'm prepared. Can you hear that? That's me in my very nice formal button-up shirt, and I have my coffee here with me. And I'm ready to answer questions. So. I'm going to give a little preamble, some pretext. I don't have a script for today. It's completely unscripted. I've looked at some of the questions beforehand, uh, obviously, <clears throat> because I have to check if there's actually questions. Um, I'm not an advice giver, but I also am. I love giving unsolicited and unwarranted and unqualified advice. So if you're interested in hearing some unqualified advice, this one's for you. Uh, thank you for everyone, like five, the, the whole cast of my friend group, basically, um, for submitting questions. I love y'all. <laughs> and yeah, I'm going to answer them to the best of my abilities, okay? So the first one is from Sally, who has been on my show. It, she's in episode two. And Sally asks, how to stop COVID? <laughs> No, no. <laughs> as much as I wish I was like the spokesperson for WHO or the CDC or something, I'm not. And I'm like, I know nothing about medical stuff. So I really don't know how to answer you from like a very logical point of view. But how to stop COVID? What a great question. I actually got my first dose of the vaccine. Um, recently. So yeah, uh, I guess get vaccinated. That's one of the very important steps that we can take right now to stop COVID and um, stay inside if your country like mine is still going through lockdown and all these different measures to keep us safe. Like we all need to play a part um, because this kind of thing, it's... Um, it's exponential, right? Like one person get it and, you know, it just keeps going higher and higher exponentially. Yeah, the most we can do as individuals is to protect ourselves and in turn that protects others. So that's the answer. That's a, That's my best answer. And the next question from Instagram comes from Colleen, who was just in my most recent, she was in episode six of the podcast. She's a very funny person. She asks, how to achieve world peace? Now, I don't know what's with all of these jarringly enormous questions. Um, I guess the answer kind of is the same as the COVID thing. Like, as private individuals, like you and I, the most we can do is to take action on the things that we have direct control over, which is ourselves and the people around us. And hope that everything works out. Okay. <laughs> I'm not really sure what to say. How to achieve world peace. Oh, uh, if that's like a hypothetical scenario, like if I were like omnipresent and omnipowerful, like what are the steps to take to achieve world peace? Um, I don't know. More love, less hate, less ignorance, more understanding. I don't know, is that too flowery of a way to put things? Like, would everyone really be happy if we just, you know, hated less or something? I don't know. That's why I'm not God, I guess. <laughs> As though God is like an elected representative. Now moving on to some anonymous questions. Um, so this one, I actually did not know who sent in this question until the very end because they basically just gave themselves away. <laughs> but thank you so much for the very detailed question. I really, really appreciate it. You're giving me content, like genuinely. So the first one is, how do you arrange your schedule to accommodate work, your podcast, and life in general? What a fantastic question. I don't. <laughs> um, I don't arrange my schedule. I used to be a very string stringent, is that the word? I used to be very strict with my schedule as as in not strict per se but organized maybe um but these days uh since graduating and everything I haven't really been able to 
you know, really, really focus my time on like, like uh, break down my time into all the different things that I have to do. So for the past two episodes, I actually edited the podcast the day of shoot, uh, like posting. And the good thing about audio is you don't have to worry that much about um, cutting things and making it flow smoothly because, oh, sorry, because as long as, you know, it's the sound is there, like you don't have to worry too much about the visuals and the visual is really, really difficult. Um, so the podcast, it's not so much as accommodating it than like I actually do need it. You know, like, a lot of these things are born out of necessity. Like, I started the podcast because, okay, sure, I was interested to do something like this. But one of the other reasons is also because I I just felt so stifled by life that, like, I needed an output that was just completely my own and I have, like, full control over because I miss school so much, like university, like when you get projects and stuff, you get to have so much free reign. And even when it's like for class and stuff, like your professors are generally, my professors were generally just really open to a lot of different ideas and stuff. So I was doing a lot more and it was a lot more variety compared to now when you're joining like the workforce and everything, like your job requirement and like your tasks are essentially the same like every day so it does get to a point where it's kind of just boring um and it doesn't stimulate me because I'm the the kind of person who's always been super used to like a lot of challenge challenging stuff intellectually because I studied a lot uh, and I'm a student and I care like too much about my grades and stuff like that but now that's that's generally just not relevant anymore, like getting good grades and stuff like that. So I needed a place where I could, you know, kind of channel that student energy. Does that make sense? So that's kind of why I started the podcast. And as to how I arrange it, I don't really have to arrange it because I just don't really have that much going on in my life. Like my work is, I wouldn't say it's menial. I can't, I can't really say that. It's challenging and it's hard at times but it's a set time you know and when you're doing the same thing nine to five well eight to five every day you just kind of it just becomes part of like your life which I guess this is a harder question to answer than I thought I I guess what I'm trying to say is I I'm not a good person to tell you how to manage your time because I don't give it that much thought. It's just something that I do. And that sounds so pretentious. I don't really, I don't really, I think, okay. I think it boils down to my self expectations and expectations from others, like responsibilities and stuff. That's just how I arrange it. I arrange it based on how important it is to me. And I personally, get very disappointed if I don't meet my own expectations. I wouldn't even say disappointed. I'm just, I just become like a total loser. (laughs) I'm just like, uh, like I feel bad about myself and I feel bad for like letting other people down, even if sub like objectively, like no one really cares. It's just, yeah. So I, I don't know. That's not really a good coping mechanism or anything. So take what you will from that. Second question from the same person. What's your opinion on neats? Because I'm currently a neat and plan to stay as one, almost like a gap year, but not really. So I'm mentally fit to start job hunting, but part of me thinks that it's a bad thing to be because it's almost like I'm wasting my time. Hoo-hoo. Um, don't even worry about that. Oh my God. Like, okay, if you guys don't know what a neat is, it's like what? Not in education, employment, or training. Here's what I think. Um, I honestly wish I could have done something like a gap year. And the reason why I didn't is probably because of, I don't know, societal expectations and um, just my own uh, toxic mentality on how life should be. Uh, If you don't know me, I graduated high school when I was like 14. And like since school days, life has always just been go, go, go. Like 
graduated at 14, went to college, went to university in America, and I've just never had time to breathe and be myself. And university was really good in, you know, helping me form my identity, but at the end of the day, I think no matter what you do, you're going to find that identity anyway, um, if that makes sense. How do I put it? Like, my opinion on needs is that as long as you're able to sustain yourself and you're not just completely falling into this life that you're not happy with and you're not just feeling like you're not doing anything and that in turn like makes you feel bad, um, then of course, like, you know, search for something that will actually make you excited about life. Like, being a neat doesn't just entirely make you someone who's, like, not contributing to society or not contributing to yourself or just not, um, just remaining stagnant and idle or anything like that. Like, it's not like that at all. I think, especially knowing (laughs) who you are, I think this is a great time and opportunity to take some time during your youth, you know, to just kind of figure out things for yourself figure out what it is that makes you you I think it's a great opportunity and um if you're not mentally fit to job hunt then don't because I immediately jumped into it because I was so scared because that's just how I am (laughs) and um and everyone around me told me that like I should just take more time for myself but then I was just like you know like if 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 I can find it, then, like, great, because of the current situation. And I did find a job. <laughs> and I did accept it. And everything kind of just fell into place. But, you know, like, everyone around me was kind of right. Like, once you get into that day-to-day, like, work-life thing, it's really hard to, like, get out of it because you don't get holidays, like, school holidays and stuff like that. So what I think is don't don't put yourself down <laughs> for being neat. Uh, and okay, this, I actually was thinking about this. I wasn't sure how in depth I should get about it, but don't fall for the whole capitalistic scheme. You know, it's a scam, really. Like, don't feel like you're wasting your time. Like, what does it mean to even waste your time? You know, like as, as humans, I, I don't know. Like it's sometimes like really jarring to see that like being an adult human is synonymous with like working full time. Like I understand like it's what you need to do to survive. But at the end of the day, why is that called wasting your time? Like laziness? Like why is that a waste of your time? Like, I don't know. I just feel like if you're happy with yourself and you're not causing anyone any trouble, like you're not wasting your time, you know? Like even doing nothing is not really wasting time. Like, you're wait you're not even wasting your own time you're generating you're doing the things you want to do so that's just how i think so yeah that's my two cents next question what was the most mind-blowing digital change knowledge you found out recently like a function on an app or software that made you go holy shit that's a thing uh that's really hard i don't really i i, I really can't think of any i i've been ruminating over this question for the past like however many days, uh, two days since I received the question. And I'm like, I I genuinely don't know. Uh, I don't know. Recently, I've been recommended. I know uh, you, I don't know. I feel like uh, the person who sent this, we, I always see your username pop up in like a lot of the posts I like. So I feel like we are probably into like similar things. But I've been really, I've been recommended a lot of like Niji Sanji, like those um, VTuber content. And I guess it's pretty cool to see, like, there's this whole community. Um, because previously, I, I mean, I've known about them, but I didn't know, how, like, how just vast that universe is. So that's pretty cool. Top three lessons from living away from home for a long time, but make it a household addition. Like, what you learned that made living independently in a house or apartment easier. That's really hard because, honestly, I've been living... <laughs> that sounds so weird to say I've been living alone for a while now because I haven't really. I've like stayed in dorms and stuff. And even right now I'm living with my sister. I think one of the most important things is 
to make a space, like buy things. Like I'm not saying blow your money, but like have items that you enjoy in your house. Like actually take the time to pick out something that actually makes you happy to look at because sometimes you just look at your room and you're just like, what the hell? <laughs> like I hate it here. But sometimes if you, if you have those items that can like kind of just dress up your room a little bit, this is like a really maybe like a dumb answer, but that's just how I feel. Like if you have some of those like things and you get to just like neatly tidy up your space, for me, like that visual cue just makes me feel a lot more at ease. So that's kind of like one of the top things. Um, another thing that makes living independently in a house apartment easier is, I don't know, like stocking up on stuff. Wow, I sound really materialistic. God. <laughs> it's easy to not realize how much stuff you need when you're not doing the buying and the purchasing and stuff like that. Like, I used to go with my dad on grocery trips too, but so as I know what we buy for the house, but then again, I, it doesn't really like occur, like register until you're like living on your own and you need all this stuff. So I don't know. Don't, don't, um, I mean, I understand some people have, like, a budget and stuff, but, like, just get the stuff that you need, okay? Necessities, okay? Stock up. Don't be going hungry and then having to go to the convenience store and buying, like, a hot cup. Even though I do love hot cups, but, like, I don't know, buy a six-pack or something. Stock up. Makes you feel good. I don't know. I, I, I really don't know because I haven't really given it proper thought. I've just, like, lived, taken each day as it comes. So maybe that's a tip, you know, just don't really put so much pressure on yourself you're alone now hey like do whatever you want you know like um just embrace that independence and just like do what makes you feel like be in tune be attentive to your own body like it's it's a great thing to live alone like i'm not saying <laughs> i'm not trying to be ungrateful and say like ah, i hate living with family but um i don't know just embrace that or something yeah <laughs> okay thank you um, for all those questions and then this next question is a is a fantastic question I actually don't know how serious this is it could be a very grave matter so I actually thought my sister sent in this question but she told me it's not her so I'm kind of concerned for this individual how do I make a person stop grabbing my ass get some help so the next question asks, where are you working right now? Just asking for fun. But uh, I don't know if this means location-wise or like company-wise. I'm in the capital city. I'm in Kuala Lumpur. And um, I'm working as a magazine writer. How neat. Uh, I am a magazine journalism student, so that's why. And uh, yeah, that's, that's what I'm working. That's not really any advice, but thank you for the question. <laughs> Okay, and then the last question comes from dear friend, Mari. Hi, if you're listening, thank you for listening. Um, and she asks, what's my journalism process? So I guess that's a really great segue. Um, like my editing process, I think, is what she asked. And that's a fascinating question. Um, thank you for asking. So I actually have... Like right now, at where I work, I am i don't have like a person to directly kind of report to in terms of my writing. So I, like my text and stuff, like it has to be approved, okay? And sometimes I have clients who have to approve it and stuff like that and they will have a lot of changes and stuff. But essentially, like content, grammar, and you know, just like angle-wise, like I'm literally the editor for that. Like I have to work on that myself like there's no one to pitch to well there is but also it doesn't it doesn't really work that way at my current company my process is well it used to be that I would interview someone I would pitch and I would interview I was scheduled on interviews once the pitch is approved um I sometimes try to do a little pre-interview stuff but honestly like I feel like you can just find the info online <laughs> but sometimes I do call ahead to ask and then I would have all the notes on one hand and I usually do record my interviews but 
I usually don't go through it. Like sometimes I do have to transcribe and stuff, but I just feel like it's such a waste of time unless I'm looking for a very specific quote. But I usually just take really extensive notes. Like my hands, they go ham. Like I type on average like 100 words per minute because I only use my index finger. So I just go really ham. Um, 100 words if I'm trying really hard. So, which I am doing interviews. Uh, and then I would write down write, write down the important parts and then I would throw that on like a Google Doc or something. And then I'd open up another Google Doc and then I'll start writing. So I have two pages. Sometimes I'll already start writing the lead and the intro, like a soft opening, if it's like for magazines and stuff, before I do the interviews and stuff, just to give me like an outline of like kind of what I want to do. And, um, but right now, I don't really get to do a lot of interviews and stuff like that. Um, but if I do, that's kind of the same process. I just throw it up on one doc and then second doc to write the actual thing. I hate editing my own work to be honest, because I just don't catch the things, and then, like, I, I'm like, ugh, so I don't really like to read, like, back read the stuff I wrote. Uh, sometimes I use the Hemingway app editor thing just to, just to see if, like, another, it's like a, if you, if you, if you guys have never used Hemingway before, if you're a college student, you totally should, um, online, it's free, um, the only problem I have with it is formatting sometimes, but once you paste, like, your text in there, it tells you, like, the issues you have with like run-on sentences and like passive voices and stuff like that, which is <clears throat> particularly important for a journalism student because you don't want to use passive voice uh, most of the time. I personally can't care less. I kind of really do miss journalism though. I haven't really flexed my journalistic muscles in a while to be honest. Like, I kind of miss it a lot. But yeah, thank you for asking. Thank you for being interested. Anyways, thank you so much for everyone who stayed and listened. Thank you for everyone who sent the questions. I like am genuinely appreciative for the people who have given me the questions to work with. <laughs> um, yeah, thank you so much. And um, I'm really happy to do this and um, to be able to do this. And for like, seriously, just like that um, handful of people who actually do listen, like, Thank you so much. And um, yeah, thank you for tuning in. Bye.